So, Mr. Lee, it was a pleasure. Happy New Year yes, to you, happy sir. Happy New Year to you and to your listeners and viewers out there. So, I'm sure you'll have heard this time and time again over the last couple of days, mm -hmm. but I want you to respond to this. So, basically, this was a major point of reference for the Prime Minister of these tax breaks that were given mm -hmm. to various companies um, just for, you know, to stay, uh, quote unquote, um, to stay in the realm of power. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the gas price, the oil prices dropping and so forth, it was not feasible. Mm -hmm. That money did not come back into the country. Mm -hmm. And as he mentioned, the lifeblood mm -hmm. of the country was drained. Now, there was a hemorrhaging, I don't use that term, of the lifeblood of the country because of these tax breaks added to whatever other decisions that were made. Um, you, I would heard the um, mention that, you know, we've heard this before, mm -hmm. but there are those who are on social media and others who are saying, you know what, um, these figures are for some reason clearer to me now than before. And it seems as though the Prime Minister has gotten some favor by some in the public domain over these last two days. But how do you feel about what you've, what you've witnessed well, the last couple of days? Well, let me start off with... Um to your listeners and viewers out there, I always feel blessed coming into your studio. Well, we're glad that I, you feel I, blessed. I, I'm always grateful when you invite me. <laughs> no to, problem. To thank you think. for coming. So, so thank you again, Sheldon. Let me first start off, and I, I don't know if, um, given how Dr. Rowley, Prime Minister, had had um, his his whole past two days, his theme was mind your business. Mm -hmm. So I really know if, if, if you really want me to answer, maybe Dr. Rory <laughs> Prime Minister might not want us to answer because you're seeing people are responding mm -hmm. and they're getting angry and they're getting vexed because they're trying to say that what Dr. Rory tried to present there over the last two year, two days mm -hmm. doesn't add up. The numbers just doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. and, and so his team is mind your business, so I'm, I'm going to mind his business this afternoon. All right. I'm sure okay. he wouldn't mind. <laughs> so that, um, I, um, because you, I really don't understand the theme, mind your business. He doesn't want anybody to, 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 to challenge his government to, to, because when he, when they came in, you know, it's funny, when they came into government, one of their biggest promises was accountability, transparency, mm -hmm. and consultation with the people. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a sort of a, uh, hypocrisy in his team, mind your business, and, and that's what they came well, I into. I think part of the okay. theme is mind your business, it's our business. So I don't know if he's trying to say don't let anyone distract you or let, let anyone, you know, put on your horse blinders then to those mm -hmm. who are trying to tell you otherwise. Mm okay. Yeah. All right, let me, <laughs> let's let me put it this way, um, Sheldon. The numbers that, that Dr. Rowley presented, let me talk about the, the what you just presented. Yeah, let just me go now. from there. Mm -hmm. um, when we came into power in 2010, uh, the PP government that is led by the Honorable Kamala Prasad de Sessa, a lot of those contracts with the downstreamers that utilize natural gas were already in place. Mm -hmm. And, and the, most, the biggest suppliers of users of, of natural gas would have been in the Point Lisa's industrial estate. Mm -hmm. So that when Dr. Rowley showed that red line of the, con yeah. of, of, of the users of the gas, mm -hmm. those contracts with those, those companies were already in place when we came into power in 2010. Mm -hmm. So we had, an, we had the same problem. What, what, what had happened prior to 2010 was that the last PNM administration led by Mr. Manning mm -hmm. really did not put things in place because the, the gas was, the, the production and the output of gas was dropping. dropping right. Mm -hmm. So the PP government had to do something to, to increase the production level of gas mm. um, to, to, to meet the same contracts, contract agreement, yeah. uh, contract agreement that we met in place mm -hmm. when we came into power in 2010. Because government is a business. Government is a continue. Uh, you, not because administration changed that you change contractual agreements. Mm -hmm. um, because if you start doing that, you would run people or, or you would run foreign investment from the country because the, the, the foreign companies would not have faith in, your, in, in, in the country um, in doing business with the country. So we had to put something in place. And, and, and quickly what we did is that the last Minister of Energy, um, Kevin Ramnarine, um, with, the, with, with, with the PP government, they, they came up with the, with, the, with the oil companies and the gas producers of incentivizing so you had to come up with something to create something very quick mm -hmm. um, for the gas producers to be to to, to find gas or to drill gas mm -hmm. or, or, to, or to find more gas and you had to incentivize them to be able to put out their capital expenditures to do that this is what we did 
And you see, it, it, it is ironic that when the Prime Minister is now talking about the uptick in the gas production, it's because of the same incentives that we had put in place to, to create that that um, business model with the gas producers, mm -hmm. the, the BPs and the, and the, and the B, BHP billetons, to go out there and find more gas because of the incentive. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what just uh, yeah. um, the past BP of Trinidad, Norman Christie, had praised the PP government about those incentives mm -hmm. because it, even when you, you, now you're seeing the Juniper project that came into being, the Angelin, the truck that is producing gas for this country. Mm -hmm. um, and it is because of the incentive and the work done by the PP government that, that the country, let us not say the PNM government, but the country is now enjoying and trying to meet the obligations of the, of, of, of the, um, the downstreamers who, who depend on their business for gas. Now, these incentives mm -hmm. that you're making reference to, I want you to go into some detail in a short while, mm -hmm. but before we get to that, According to the Prime Minister, mm -hmm. these incentives at that time dug an even deeper hole for the country and, of course, making reference to the oil and gas industry. He made a point where he said that he learned since a boy that mm -hmm. if you're in a hole, you don't keep on digging. Mm -hmm. You have to find a way to get mm -hmm. out. He's making the point that these incentives at the time when the PP government was in power, mm -hmm. these incentives actually created more debt which the, which the now opposition when the government ignored when no, no, they were there. How no, do you no, respond no, no. to that? I, I don't understand what he mean, meant by creating more debt. First of all, the incentives were, were in place for three years, and the incentives have now come to an end. Right. So what is going to happen now is that the, 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 the taxation on, on, these, on, the, uh, on these same companies, mm -hmm. um, the country will start to enjoy. So you had to fast track something to give an incentive um, for these energy companies to put to go out and find gas which it did and that is, and that the proof is there because you have the juniper you have the truck the angelina that's producing gas that the country is enjoying right now so those incentives have come to an end and it ended in at the ending of, of 2018 so during 2019 and 2020 going forward you will see the, the taxation being paid on 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 by these companies mm -hmm. so you have there's something as you uh, my mother you have to give to get mm -hmm. right um so that that is what that was a business model that we did. The the, the energy companies um, all complemented the PP government. That be, because remember the, the, besides the the, the 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 tax that you would have given up, when these companies go about drilling, there's so much other um, ancillary companies that benefit and workers benefit from the drilling of gas. You have the only service providers in Trinidad and Tobago that would have enjoyed. Um, business and would have paid tax on that, mm -hmm. right? They would have been able to employ people based on the, 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 the incentives and the drilling of um, out trying to find gas so that it created not only, so while you might have given up um, taxes for a short term by the, by, 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 the, by the, the giant um, energy companies, mm -hmm. what would have happened that they would have employed um, subcontractors, they would have employed service con providers in Trinidad and Tobago, and they, those would have employed employees, mm -hmm. and you would have been able to, you would have been getting taxes from those sub subsidiaries, those, those um, service providers, employees, PAYE, NIS, so forth and so forth. So it, it was a, a model that, that it benefited the country, and that is what is happening now with the uptick mm -hmm. in gas production. So what you're saying is that these tax breaks or concessions didn't break the back of the no, economy. No. Um, and Actually, and what you're saying you, you, there, there's actual growth that took place even when even we in the left, midst of the PNM being in power. When we left in 2015, and, and, mm -hmm. and it's sad that the Prime Minister took two days to keep blaming the Kamala Prasad PP-led government. The Prime Minister is in government for 40 months now, approximately. Mm -hmm. And you cannot keep blaming a past regime. It is like you are in charge of running a company. But you're he's in saying charge that of because of all the debt, that's why they have to make debt? the point. They, 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 have they have to make the point that they're trying to rebuild what the, what the PP no, no, destroyed. No, no. What has happened, um, Sheldon, is that this government has incurred more debt on, this, on us as citizens mm -hmm. in the past 40 months than any other government in the past. And, and it, when we left our debt to GDP, ratio was about 47 percent. 
Mm. Now, the, 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 this present government has taken that debt to 61, 62%. So clearly, they are borrowing. Mm -hmm. But while they are borrowing, and they have spent in the last three years um, about $160 billion in budgets, are the people feeling that sort of expenditure that was spent in the last three years by this present government? Mm -hmm. We just came out of a, a Christmas um, recently, just a few weeks ago, and it has been one of the worst Christmas seasons for businesses in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. All right, um, all the businesses are saying it was flat, and the economy is dead. Um, I mean, just about six months ago, the, the Minister of Finance was talking about he can see clearly now the economy has turned. What has happened? Yeah, that reference was what has happened? because now we're hearing of 2019. What has happened? And, and this is what is happening. Such a good year. That's right. They're saying 2019 is, is, is might be one of the worst years for us. So you are, in, you are running a country. You are head of us, of a company. Let us use the, the country as a company. Mm -hmm. You are the CEO. And after 14 months, you, you cannot give us the country, your, your, your shareholders, a vision where you are taking us, what has happened and, and account for your last 14 months um, in, in running the company, in running the country, that, that what has happened? What, what tangibles can you show to this country, to your shareholders, to your taxpayers, to the citizenry? After 14 months of running the country, what tangibles have you shown? What can you bring to the table? Nothing. Nothing. In reference to the borrowing point that you made, um, again, you could respond to this as well. This, I think, was in part one, where you said there was good borrowing and bad borrowing. Mm -hmm. He said they did good borrowing mm -hmm. in terms of having to of deal with the, 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 the shortfalls of, again, the past PP government, whereas mm -hmm. the PP government had bad borrowing just to stay in power. Let, let me again, put, just, it, let just me put it this way, um, <laughs> Sheldon. You might have two CEOs running a company. Kamala Prasad Bissessa, let us use that analogy, was the CEO under the PP government from 2010 to 2015. Right. She has management styles, her decision-making process. Um, you have Dr. Keith Rowley, who is now the present CEO, the prime minister of this country. Mm -hmm. The two might not agree on the way forward to run the company, to run the country. But does, that does not mean that they that. Mrs. Basabi says her decision-making process was flawed or bad. Right. We have seen in 2010 to 20, when she came in 2010, she had to deal with certain issues like the Clico fiasco, that debacle, mm -hmm. right? And meet all those commitments, meet all the contractors that would have been owed under the Manning um, administration because it's a business. Mm -hmm. She didn't what she, she didn't cry. What, what we witnessed in the last two days, and I'm sorry to say this, and uh, I feel blessed inside of here, that, that, <laughs> that I <laughs> really don't want to say, but you saw, uh, in my humble view, Dr. Rowley crying in the last two days. And, 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 and I am saying, as oh, a CEO, okay. start to saying. lead. Mm -hmm. 40 months, the country is asking, the, asking you as the head of this country, what have you done? What, where are you carrying us? Mm -hmm. Stop blaming the last government. You might not like their decisions. Fine, good. They are no longer in power. Mm -hmm. They are not the CEO anymore. You are in charge for 40 months. Mm -hmm. you, are, you have a new team. What have you all done for this country? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I, as a citizenry, Forget us as, um, myself as a politician here this afternoon. 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, I thought that each year went by, we would have seen a better growth in this country, in the economy. No matter how small. No yeah. matter how small. As a businessman, I thought I would have seen growth. I would have seen um, you know, solidification. I would have seen maybe employment being stable, and I'm not seeing that. Mm -hmm. And 2019, the, all the, the economists are predicting 2019 will be one of our worst years. And I, I, I am scared. I am scared just, I think, a lot of citizens are scared because they would not have mm -hmm. thought that in 2019, after the fourth year of, of Dr. Rowley's administration, we will be worse off than when we started in, when he took up office in, in September 2015. Mm -hmm. I don't think this country prepared for that. You cannot come and tell me now in January 2019, after 40 months of running a country, you're now telling us that we are no better off than when we were in September 2015 when you took, took charge and of this I, and, country. And I think one of the, 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 uh, one of the uneasy feelings that people are having right now is that 
the report ended with um, that whole concept or in the context of projections. This is what it's is just... projected and this is what will be projected. Mm -hmm. And people, I think at this point, they want to hear, okay, what is? The people are yeah, fed up I of projections. Where... I mean, uh, I mean, what, what Dr. Rowley, the Prime Minister, did there for the last few days was try to dazzle people with graphs and pie charts and so forth. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. It didn't work in my humble view. Right? It's just a regurgitation of, of what they came into power with, with about the chastising and, 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 and bad mouth in the PP government. Um, I'm, I'm amazed that, that people can say, as you rightly you, you yeah, said, they, they, that they say it's those, clearer now. I, I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, I, I listened to the, the mm. CEO of the business, China Tobago Business Chamber. He's saying that he can see clearly now. If, if as head of the CEO of the Business Chamber, after 40 months, he didn't understand what Dr. Rowley was talking about in the last 40 months. Well, heaven help him, right? Heaven help him. Because I don't understand all Dr. Rowley tried to do on Monday night. I was just to paint the Kamala-led administration, again, blame her. Um, they blame, they, they tend to blame uh, Mrs. Prasad Bissessa for everything. So we weren't surprised when we heard this, 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 State of the Nation address, it was a, we thought it was a State of the Nation address that mm -hmm. we had said at the beginning, I'm sure he's going to come to blame Kamala for everything on this son. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, 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 bore, it, 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 it bore fruit that she, he did for the last two days in this, this presentation that he did. He added nothing of substance. He added no, no vision. Um, he talked about the San Fernando waterfront who's supposed to be, because they shut down Petrotrin, they send home over 4,600 workers. We'll talk about that next right? time. Right? So with the, with the understanding, trying to fool the people, that there's this library dry dock come in and create employment. Mm. Um, that is yet to start. The San Fernando waterfront will create employment. Mm. Um, that is yet to start. The San Fernando project was supposed to, this is one of their projects they came in into power with in 2015. Mm. We are now in 2019. It has not started. They have not built one house. Mm. Not one house have they built in the last 40 months. Mm. Petrotrin. Mm -hmm. um, they had a meeting this morning, but was surrounding something else and the, the so-called the health insurance so far for the workers. Mm -hmm. But that was a major part of his presentation as well. And he spoke about the proposed royalties and so forth that they expect to get $7 billion um, by, of course, with this new arrangement with Heritage. Whereas if they had stuck with what was happening, Mm -hmm. It would have been two billion dollar loss mm -hmm. per year. Yeah, we hear that so, narrative. We again, hear that narrative. Again. The narrative. Um, what Dr. Rowley is trying to do to the public is trying to to Is that impossible? That seven billion dollars? Is that is that far far fetched? What did, what time frame was he say going to make the seven billion dollars? He gave a few years. I can't right. yeah, he gave a few years. Yeah. Right. Not now. Not now. Right. So, so uh, uh, what happened to the 4,600 people that were sent home? Mm. What are they supposed to do? What, what, are they, what is the government or the, the citizenry supposed to do? Hope and wait that this royalty that, that um, we have a foreigner that is in charge of the heritage. See, a bigger, st a bigger issue was at hand huh? to save the country. Save the country. He said, yes, you know, people's jobs are lost and he sympathized. And, and he also said in his state of the uh, mind your business address that. Uh, He's aware, based on his decision, a lot of businesses were closed, uh, closed, has closed up, and employees sent home. Now, that's not that besides Petrotrain, besides TSTT. So his decision-making process in the last 40 months have a, has, has caused businesses, small and medium businesses, to close up and send home employees on the breadline. And that is something that we have not even factored into. I mean, when you, you, when you drive around a place, you have seen so many places commercial places up for rent mm -hmm. that, that had small businesses and medium businesses. When you go, walk through Trin City Mall, you, the amount of shops that are closed up now is amazing. I, I've accounted over 50 stores have closed up and left Trin City Mall mm -hmm. because the, the economy is not there. The, there's no, the, the people are not buying um, because they are, so, they have, a lot of people have lost their jobs. And even those who are employed are, are, are you know, are managing their, their, their funds very um, frugally now because they don't know if they, their job will be on the, on the, on the, on the chopping line. Mm. Um, so that when you have people like in the state enterprise like Wasa and, and TSCT and so forth that, that thought that, you know, that felt secure, they're no longer secure. So they're, 
the, the, the job market or the employment market of these no, you're not secure anymore. He said people are not seeing, and I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, and that, again, is something that he continues to defend, where he says that, listen, people need to see the bigger picture of country first, and sacrifices need to be made. So and we I, have no problem with, I, so I think this like, is the like, normal like man of the street. like looking at a needle, right. and he said, look I, at the I, bigger picture. I hear you. Yeah. And, and I think the normal individual, and even including myself, as I said, I think we are all patriots to this country. We all love our country. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a problem in taking some medication right. for the bigger picture, right, to get better. But no, you cannot come and tell this country, after 40 months, right. you keep you seeing the same thing that you started mm -hmm. on September the 8th, 2015. Mm -hmm. Your rhetoric has not changed. So how much medicine you want me to take? Well, I was not. <laughs> how much medication you want me to take? For the last yeah. 40 months, I'm taking medication. Overdose just now. Right? <laughs> and, and you want me to still take medication? I mean, mm. I have no problem if I take medication. And I would have thought after maybe 12 months, 24 months, I would have, my dosage would have gone down. But you're increasing my dosage of medication. So, so. I mean, and, and I couldn't put it any better than that. And I, and I really, yeah, that's clear. I mean, that's clear I, enough, I don't yeah. really like to bash in um, the government, especially in a place like this, no, right? <laughs> but but I, I'm talking as a citizen yeah. because I'm talking like a, I'm a businessman. I'm, I'm, I'm a normal individual. I'm no better than anyone else. And after 40 months, you cannot come and tell this country you have nothing, we, we, you, you have not given us any hope. You, you are saying, take more medication. That's what I said for right? Right? Take more NyQuil, go to sleep. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 well, come on, but, yeah. but tell us what you have you done in the last 40 months. Yeah. You, let, us, let us talk, what, let, let me try to bring some, some clarity to, to, to this discussion. Mm. The Galleon Passage, which is the Tobago Ferry. It's a total fiasco. You are fooling the people. Not only Tobagoians, but any Trin Trinbagoians who use the, the Galleon Passage to even go to Tobago for vacation or, or, or business or something, right? We are Twin Island State. You, you are now telling me, the, the, well, the Galleon Passage is really is a vessel not for rough seas. Here what he, he said, it really was a vessel for the Toko port. So we'll, that was really supposed to be used before. I remember Toko that. I remember that. To that was, Tobago. You know, one of the conversations right? meeting. Here, so yeah. what are you putting first? Mm. The horse before the cart? Because if, if the Galleon Passage was really for the Tobago port mm. between T Toko and Scarborough, you have not even built the highway, as you said, to go to Toko or even the port of Toko. So who are you really fooling the people? And your procurement practices are questionable. Look at the day they went down to Australia and they purchased two vessels. They, no procurement. Hmm. No procurement. The, the Galleon Passage was done with no procurement. And you, you, okay, so people might say, well, Kamala did it somewhere. But you, the people are looking for something better, right? So you, you chastise, you blame Kamala. Do it, do it different. Hmm. Have you done it different? And the, and the answer is no. Have you, have you accounted to the people, as you said? No. Are you more transparent? No. Are you more consultation with the, you have more proper, more consultation with people? No. So what have you done different? You blame Kamala, so what have you done different? I welcome your comments on 360-0105, 360-0105. Just before the break, Mr. David Lee was talking about um, how much medication can we take? And one thing I know about medication, if you're taking too much of it, uh, at some point in time, you're going to become addicted and then you're going to have an overdose and then you die. So uh, for, for, for us not to, to, to reach a point of death based on what Mr. Lee is saying, um, in light of what's happening in the country, we saw a lot of projections in the reports, um, but people are asking the question, okay, is it that with all these projections, what's going on now? And many believe that I'm still stuck. But if the UNC, because it's no longer a coalition, mm -hmm. if the opposition leader, this mm -hmm. is Kamala Pasabi Sessa, because that's her current position, mm -hmm. if the country decides, listen, okay, and I'm, I'm just being open here, mm -hmm. we love you, but you fail us. 
Dr. Rowley, mm -hmm. we love you, but you're failing us. I'm just saying that mm -hmm. some people yeah, be saying yeah, that yeah. they may not have any hatred or bitterness towards yeah, as individuals. I'm just saying, right? right. right? I don't, I don't yes, hate right. you, but you feel you, you feel, feel as I see you. Right. Good. How am I to trust you again? Well, and that's the question I think some people are asking, given well, history. I think there are two folds to answer that. Mm -hmm. Let's take the two individuals' track records mm -hmm. as, as, as running the country. Mm -hmm. Under Mrs. Basad Bissessa's tenure, you would have seen so many schools that were built, mm -hmm. highways. Um, we have a, you, you, the same sporting facility that we see in Cuba right now that is being utilized. For, to try and boost sports um, mm -hmm. diversification and sports tourism is being utilized right now. It was under her tenureship. That's a vision. The Coover Children's Hospital was another vision. The, the South Campus UWI was another vision. All right? uh, and it was all in a way of generating um, and diversifying the economy, whether it is medical tourism, whether it's sports tourism. And, but also what she, what she did in, in 2010 to 2015 was the infrastructural aspect of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. Throughout Trinidad and Tobago, I would say all 41 constituencies were not neglected. Right. What were you, you might have hap find happening that in certain constituencies that, that were neglected in, the, in, 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 what, in past regime, I'm not blaming anyone, you might have seen more work being done because it required more work to, be, to do to develop the place. Mm -hmm. You would have seen businesses flourish under Kamala Prasad Bissessa. You would have seen the economy grow under Kamala Prasad Bissessa. So she, she was no longer in government. The people voted against her for, for reasons that are yet uh, maybe on perception was a reason more than anything else. Maybe it was based on perception, based on what was the PR uh, or the political bantering. Because right. the argument that they would give, based on what you just said, mm -hmm. they would say, okay, yes, you know, track record-wise, many things were built and so forth mm -hmm. and put in place, but there are those who are saying the economy did not grow. Of course, that's the no, argument no, no, that no, Dr. No, Rowley no. gave. They, they, it's clear the numbers are there. The All right, okay, grew, yeah. Right? <laughs> the Arima Hospital is, is in a PNM constituency. That was started under Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Right. The 0.40 hospital of PNM constituency was started under Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Mm -hmm. The highway from, from Sando to 0.40, it's for everyone. It was to grow business in that part of the country, the Point Forte, La Brea, Faisabad, uh, mm -hmm. It was to open up the country for development. And if that had continued, um, you would have seen a different type of country in the south part of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And the south part of Trinidad is not UNC country. I don't know why they feel as UNC country. You have Point Fortis, PNM, Labres, PNM, Sando East, Sando West is PNM. All right? So that it is for everyone. And we must stop thinking like that. A highway is for everyone to drive. It's for all businesses to, to mushroom and develop and grow. So that, so that under the Rowley administration for the 40 months, let us compare 40 months under Prime Minister Rowley versus 40 months under Pamela. It's, it's chalk and cheese. Kamala Basabi sets a developed and grew this country way and above what has happened in the last 40 months. Okay? So one might have said, okay, well, Kamala Basabi sets had the oil prices better mm. under her tenureship than an, under Rowley. But as a CEO, you know when you're a good CEO, in times of, it, it, when you're in crisis, you, you really know when a leadership, when you have good leadership. And I am, I will tell you, when the Pandey administration with the UNC government was in power in his first time, oil, oil was eight dollars a barrel, mm -hmm. and he grew this country. Mm -hmm. He grew this country. I want, right? I want to address a question. Now, this question is kind of sidestepping a bit, uh, but it can actually fall into line when we're talking about this person sending a text. Mm -hmm. I guess along the lines of those who have lost jobs, mm -hmm. whether it be in the oil industry and so forth, mm -hmm. and everything that's happening with the projections, the latest report. This was the saying, can they, I guess we can reference to the UNC, mm -hmm. have lawyers help communities on the knowledge of their rights um, and, and ministers' accountability? Right. So I guess they're asking how... For example, I'll take that in yeah. respect to the legal aspect. Mm -hmm. um, Senator Ramdin, who's a, a very excellent lawyer, mm -hmm. constitutional-wise, is helping a lot of ex 
um, Petrochemical employees mm -hmm. who would have been terminated without any severance, especially those individuals um, that were labeled temporary employees that would have worked over 20 years with Petrochemical, and they walked away with nothing. Right. Not nothing because because the company couldn't come up with a formula, mm -hmm. so that they, so there was a a dis a, a unbalance and fairness um, that happened in Petrochemical even with the severing of employees. And you all still have your meetings, your Monday night for meetings. Well, so we, we we our last Monday we didn't have any in December. We are starting up in in I guess January. That's something that you can look. And um, uh, I tell level. you, this year we're gonna be having a lot of Monday night forums. Mm -hmm. um, as you know. If you listen to Dr. Rolly, it might be election time coming up very soon. I, I was so saying that, that um, election has begun in um, TNT, So that we, we are prepared. Mm. Um, we had our major meeting on Monday this week, um, our caucus with all our parliamentary arms. And um, we are gearing up, up also because we take nothing to chance. Um, and there's a lot of work still to be done. So that um, we are prepared, we are working. Um, the Honorable Leader, led by Kamala Basad Bissessa, is all geared up and fired up. And, uh, and um, but coming back to the question of, sure. of, of what you can, the, UN's, the United National Congress, this time around, you would see a mix of, of, of young, professional experience with, 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 with um, mature experience. Mm -hmm. um, it, was a, it would be a blend of the two. Um, and, and you would see a different a different um, group of individuals. Um, I would also say that some of the individuals who might not be there anymore um, are doing mentoring. They're doing mentoring to the, to the, to the, to the party they're, because they're, they're, their experience is not going to be lost mm -hmm. um, because we understand that it takes it takes a family to really run this thing. And, 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 and you and and I, who some of these mentors are? Um, like Dr. Ramachan, I'm Dr. Ramachan is a, I, is, is a, you know, a lot of people, he's a very hard working, when he was a minister, he's very hard working. Mm -hmm. Um, some people might not have liked his style, but I, 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 I his mind is, 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 he's one of, uh, one of the better debaters. I and mean, when you listen to him in parliament and his, and, and his, his thoughts and his ideas is, is really visionary and is, and it's really, it's good, it's good business, mm -hmm. business issues are making process. Um, so he is, he is doing a lot of mentoring, um, and it augurs well because he has a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. I so, want to touch quickly before we run out of time, um, just to turn into the report just for a couple of minutes. Um, this is another major point that was, you know, a major part of the news as well that I also brought up yesterday, the Heritage Stabilization Fund. Mm -hmm. And he was making the point that the UNC really drilled the PLM over this and so forth about using out of the um, well, stabilization. Well, <laughs> let, me, let, me just, let me just say what mm -hmm. he, well, you know what he said, but just mm -hmm. for the public's benefit, mm -hmm. that he showed on his graph, mm -hmm. well, the graph that the fund, the stabilization fund, mm -hmm. is one whereby you can use in the event that you have to uh, basically stabilize, mm -hmm. I'm using that word, the economy, mm -hmm. right, based on where you are, mm -hmm. right? And he showed where that they use the interest mm -hmm, only, mm -hmm. so the fund in itself mm -hmm. has not been really affected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How would you? What, what Dr. Ari is setting the stage for is to dip more into the heritage and stabilization <laughs> fund. So what he's saying is plain, I would use the word, and, I, and please forgive me, smart with foolishness, right? Mm -hmm. So that you, what he's saying that you invest $100 and, and that $100 made interest of, 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 of $5, mm -hmm. so only taking all the $5, I'm not, I'm not touching the $100. Mm -hmm. That's smart with foolishness because the interest earned on your, on, on your investment is part of, your, of, of the country's income or the, or, or the citizenry's um, fund, mm -hmm. right? Now, yes, you, you say that you, you, will only suppose it, you can only touch it in case of, of real trouble for the country, right. right? Which is what he said right in. But then Dr. Rowley cannot come and say to us, the country, in, in May of this year, of 2018, six months ago, your Minister of Finance, who you say is the best thing, has said this economy has turned. We have, can see clearly now. And nobody is making or challenging the Minister of Finance to say, how can you in May mm -hmm. make a statement 
and go into the parliament and do a mid-year review and talk about the budget and the country has changed, the economy has changed. You come back in October 2018 and pass your budget for 1819 and said the same thing. And January, you know, the, every all the economists are saying 2019 is going to be a bad year. What has somebody missed the boat? Somebody is not is not somebody is, is wrong and 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 if all the economists say in 2019 your projections are not there how can we believe you dr rowley in your last two days and especially last day where you talk about projections in 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 your in your pie charts and your graphs mm -hmm. and somebody has to challenge the minister of finance and come and tell this country when you said the economy has turned and you, and you can see clearly now and everybody felt that the economy is, has, is now going to grow what has happened? Mm -hmm. and, and, and we need to hold the Minister of Finance accountable. So what they're doing is going to, they are, I have no doubt that this year in 2019, they're going to do two things. They're going to borrow more, mm -hmm. and they're going to dip into the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. Our, yours, mine, everyone, every, all of yours out there, our nest, our savings, they're going to dip into it, right? And, and, and the reason why they're going to dip in it, because the last 40 months, they have done nothing, they have not, they have done nothing for this country to really take it in the, in the part that it really supposed to be going after 40 months. You cannot come and tell me after 40 months, take more medication. In term, as, as we close, I know the opposition leader would have called for a debate. Um, you know, what, what is the position of the UNC right now moving forward? Well, the opposition leader has challenged the, the, the prime minister to debate on his two-day presentation. Mm, I have any feedback at all on that? From the government, mm -hmm. no, we have no Nothing feedback so far. Um, but she, uh, just let me interrogate. She has she has challenged him to debate one on one, mano si mano, to use her words, um, anywhere, anytime, and she's mm -hmm. prepared to debate Dr. Rowley based on his two day presentation and the numbers that he has shown there and projected there. And and we, we wait, wait and see. see if that happens. But but besides that, we have filed certain questions in the parliament on mm -hmm. Friday. Um, on, on this two-day presentation. So one has to, to challenge them and see. Yes. As always, a pleasure indeed, it's Mr. Lee, for coming, coming on the program and addressing these issues. Of course, that's on the public's heart and mind. I'm I, forward I, to I really you hope again. one day, Sheldon, that you can bring me in your studio, this blessed place, and not talk politics. Politics, all right. We can talk I mean, something I, uh, I, motivation, I, I, um, <laughs> something, you know, I... I, I, I well, I listen, feel, I feel... You feel, the, you feel the, 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 the urge to do so. All right. We will. We will make it happen. We will make it happen. This has been Cloud9 on ACT on The Voice with Mr. David Lee. Motivational Monday next week, right? So it goes. Take care of yourselves and each other, and God bless you.